So, in this video, we are going to discuss the question in thermal physics which appeared in IIT JAM 2014 examination. First question is, uh, in one dimension, an ensemble of n classical particle has an energy of the form. So, we are given a number of particles, number of particles which is equal to n and the energy of an individual particle is of the form E that is equal to P x square upon 2m plus half K x square. Okay. The average internal energy of the system at temperature T is. Okay. So, let's try to understand uh, this problem. We are having a system of n particles and uh, where the energy of each individual particle is represented by this expression. Okay, So, average energy of this system can be found, average energy per particle for this system can be found because here we are having uh, one square energy term and this is the another square energy term. Okay, So, according to the uh, equipartition theorem, so what does it say? Equipartition theorem. It says that each square energy terms contribute an average energy of each square energy term contribute an average energy of half kVT at temperature T. Okay, so this is the contribution per square energy term. So here because we are having two square energy terms, so therefore the contribution to the average energy will be from the first term we will have kVT by two, and similarly from the second term we will have kT by so, ultimately, the average energy per particle is equal to kVT. So, therefore, the average energy for n particle that is equal to U that is equal to n times average energy per particle. So, that is equal to n times kBT. So, therefore, D is the correct option here. Let's uh, take a look at the next problem. The question is a solid metallic cube of heat capacity. So we are given the principal heat capacity of a solid metallic cube. So let's draw uh, uh, the given statement pictorially. So we are having a solid metallic cube whose heat capacity is S. Okay, and this is at temperature 300 Kelvin. Okay, now it is brought in contact with the reservoir. It's, uh, so this cube is brought in contact with the a big reservoir, which is at temperature of 600 Kelvin. So, this is our reservoir. Okay, let's call this as reservoir. Now, we are bringing this metallic cube in contact with the reservoir. Okay, if the heat transfer takes place only between the reservoir and the cube. Okay, so that means when this cube is brought in contact with the reservoir, the only heat energy transfer which is taking place between these two entities because one of them is at lower temperature and another one is at higher temperature. So, energy exchange uh, will occur between these two. Okay, so then the entropy change of the universe after reaching the thermal equilibrium is what? So, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to find what is the entropy change of the universe okay so we know that the entropy change of the universe that will be the entropy change of the cube plus entropy change of the reservoir when the energy exchange has taken place okay so let's try to evaluate these two quantities one by one uh, uh, for the first case the entropy change of the cube okay so the first case that we will discuss it is the entropy change of cube okay so because for the cube the temperature uh, it's changing from 300 kelvin to 600 kelvin when it's brought in contact with the uh, reservoir so therefore delta s cube delta s cube is equal to d cube by t when temperature is changing from t1 to t2 okay what is d cube by uh, t that is equal to s dt that gives us a t q and divided by t and from temperature t1 to t2 which is 300 kelvin to 600 kelvin okay and this is equal to s because it's constant at that's the specific uh, so not specific heat but the heat capacity s ln t2 upon t1 so s ln 600 kelvin divided by 300 kelvin that is equal to s ln 2 s ln2 and that's nothing but 0 
s and this is positive quantity okay because heat is uh, taken by the cube okay now in order to evaluate the entropy change of the reserve wire okay the, now in the second step we will evaluate entropy change of reserve wire how we can do that for entropy change uh, calculation we require what is the heat energy exchange between the reserve wire and the system okay let, let me call this as delta q r that's the energy exchange between the reserve wire and the cube when they are brought in contact with each other now uh, if you just take a look at the problem here when reserve wire come in contact with the cube because the reserve wire it is at higher temperature as compared to the cube so therefore the energy transfer will take place from the reserve wire to the cube when they are coming together okay so that means uh, energy the heat energy will be lost by the reserve wire so therefore the delta k r will be negative for this this uh, uh, for the reserve wire and how we can calculate that uh, uh, delta k r that is equal to simply minus s dt so basically we are calculated calculating delta k r by applying the the principle of calorimetry which says that the energy lost by the reserve wire that is equal to energy gained by the uh, cube okay and energy gained by the cube is that is s dt okay and negative sign i am putting here because this is the energy lost by the reserve wire so that's why a negative sign here okay so minus s and dt is what that is uh, 600 minus 300 okay so this is equal to minus 300 s so that is the delta k wire so therefore the entropy change of the reserve wire therefore entropy change for reserve wire that is delta s r that is equal to delta q r by the temperature at which the reserve wire is sharing the energy and that is the temperature of the reserve wire okay what is delta q r so here delta q r is minus 300 s divided by reserve wire temperature which is 600 kelvin okay so that is equal to minus s by 2 which is minus 0 0.5 s okay now the entropy change for the universe will be delta s universe that is equal to delta s cube plus delta s reserve wire and that is equal to minus uh, sorry delta s cube it's positive 0 0.96 s minus 0 0.5 s and i made a mistake here i think it was uh, 0 0.69 not 0 0.96 it is 0 0.69 i made a mistake here okay so let me write it as 0 0.69 0 0.69 s minus this one and this comes out to be equal to 0. 19 s okay so therefore d is the correct option here let's take a look at the next problem so this uh, this problem is connected with, uh, with the uh, class the use of classes clapton equation okay we are given a uh, that at atmospheric pressure which is equal to 10 power 5 pascal aluminium melts at 550 kelvin okay so at one atmospheric pressure the melting point of aluminium is it is 550 kelvin okay its density decreases from this value to this value okay so that means let's say this is the initial density and this is the final density latent heat of fusion of aluminium okay so l that is given to be 24 into 10 power 3 joule per kilogram okay the melting point of aluminium at pressure of 10 power 7 pascal is close, closest to so so that means the melting point at uh, one atmospheric pressure which is equal to 10 power 5 uh, okay so so that means the information that is provided to us it is at one atmospheric pressure which is equal to 10 power 5 pascal the melting point of aluminium is this this much okay now we are asked asked that when the pressure is equal to 10 power 7 pascal what is the 
the melting point of aluminium okay so we can solve this problem by making use of the classes clapton equation so the classes clapton equation is classes clapton equation implies that dp by dt that is equal to l by t into v2 minus v1 remember that here v2 and v1 they are the specific volume okay so therefore this can be rewritten as if i am multiplying by mass in the numerator and the same i have i need to do in the denominator also m v2 minus m v1 okay and this is equal to m l upon t and then earlier it was specific volume but when you multiply it with the m here it will become the volume actually v2 minus v1 okay now this can be further rewritten as i will bring this m into the denominator here okay so so that mean i can rewrite this as l upon t v2 upon m minus v1 upon m okay and that is equal to l upon t okay 1 upon rho 2 minus 1 upon rho 1 okay now rho 1 and rho 2 they are given to us okay so let me call this as rho 1 instead of rho initial and this as rho 2 and simply we have to substitute the given values here and then we can obtain the the desired uh, final uh, temperature at which the uh, aluminum will melt okay so uh, dp by dt is equal to what is dp so dp uh, okay let me write it here dp upon dt so dp is the change in uh, p the final pressure minus initial pressure so the final pressure it's given to uh, 10 power 7 pascal so that means 10 power 7 minus initial is one atmospheric which is 10 power 5 pascal divided by dt which is t final minus t initial okay and this is equal to l which is equal to 24 into 10 power 3 l divided by t which is 550 kelvin and then multiply by 1 by uh, 1 by rho 2 that, that is rho final which is 1 divided by 2.9 it's given to us 2.9 into 10 power 3 10 power 3 minus 1 upon rho 1 which is 3 into 10 power 3 okay now we have to simply solve this uh, 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 numerical here so that means from after rearranging all these terms so this can be rewritten as if, if you solve uh, the numerator here so we obtained 99 into 10 power 5 divided by dt okay and this is equal to 24 into 10 power 6 multiply by 3 into 2.9 okay so this is uh, this we will obtain after solving the entire expression here 550 multiply by 0 0.1 so that will be written after uh, mean solving this expression okay so uh, if you just rearrange the term then we will obtain dt is equal to 2.6 kelvin here so that's the change in temperature and what is dt that is equal to t2 minus t1 so that is equal to 2.6 kelvin so that means t2 which corresponds to a pressure of 10 power 7 pascal that is equal to t1 plus 2.6 kelvin and what is t1 that is 550 kelvin plus 2.6 kelvin so that that will give us t2 is equal to 552.6 kelvin okay so therefore b is the correct option here so let's continue with next question the statement is a real gas has specific volume v at temperature t its coefficient of volume expansion and isothermal compressibility are alpha and kappa t so let's uh, write these terms first so we are given alpha the coefficient of volume expansion which is basically the isobaric expansivity and it is defined through relationship the fractional change in volume its expansivity under constant pressure okay and the another quantity is kappa t which is also called a isothermal 
compressibility okay kappa t and it is defined by relationship minus 1 by v db by dp compression it's with respect to pressure and this is under isothermal condition so here negative sign is due to the fact that when we increase the pressure so its volume decreases okay so that one delta v is going to be negative here so just to make this quantity positive a negative sign is introduced intentionally here okay so now in order to prove the given identity so we will consider the entropy to be a function of temperature and volume okay let's say that entropy it's a function of temperature and volume so then we can write for a small change in entropy that is ds that is equal to ds by dt by keeping next parameter constant which is v and then multiply by dt plus now it is ds by the change in the uh, s with respect to second parameter which is volume okay and keep the other parameter constant which is temperature and multiply by db okay so let's call this as equation 1 okay now uh, Taking differential with respect to temperature on both sides, okay, uh, this can be either written as ds by dt at constant pressure that is equal to ds by dt at constant volume plus ds by db at constant temperature and db by dt at constant pressure okay so let's call this as equation 2 so here we took the uh, expression at constant pressure because here we uh, define this change at constant pressure here okay so now if you just take a look at the left hand side if i multiply the both left hand, left hand side and right hand side by te temperature t okay so that mean if i multiply by t on both side it doesn't make any difference here okay now t ds by dt at constant pressure okay now here t ds by dt at constant pressure that is equal to dq by dt at constant pressure and that's nothing but cp okay the principal heat capacity at constant pressure similarly t ds by dt at constant volume that is equal to cb so by making use of these two uh, fundamental definitions i can rewrite equation 2 as cp cp minus cb so i'm bringing this term on the left hand side cp minus cb that is equal to t ds by dv at constant temperature and dv by dt at constant pressure okay now here we will make use of the uh, one of the maxwell relationship which connects uh, this the first differential with pressure and temperature okay so the the maxwell relation is uh, we can write ds by db at constant temperature that is equal to dp by dt at constant volume so by replacing this uh, with, uh, with the use of uh, this maxwell relationship it becomes t dp by dt at constant volume multiply by dv by dt at constant pressure okay now uh, for the first differential we will apply the reciprocity theorem and because of that we will have a negative sign in between so this can be rewritten as minus t dp by db at constant temperature and then dv by dt at constant pressure okay and then the last differential which is dv by dt at constant pressure so here we have made use of the reciprocity relationship which is if we are having a situation like this dx by dy for fixed z that is equal to dx with negative sign dx by dz by keeping by constant dz by 
dy by keeping x constant. So we have made use of this result here in above equation. Okay. So now uh, this equation can be further rewritten as let me introduce a page and then okay. So this equation can be further rewritten as cp minus cb that is equal to minus t. I am rewriting the same equation where I left on the previous page dp by db at constant temperature and then dv by dt at constant pressure and again dv by dt at constant pressure okay now here i am going to multiply by b square and divide by v square intentionally this is minus t v v and then dp by dv okay dp by dv at constant temperature and then further because we have multiplied by v square now we will divide by 1 by v also and uh, 1 by v square so 1 by v dv by dt at constant pressure and then again another 1 by v dv by dt at constant pressure okay so if you just take a look at this expression this is nothing but alpha p isobaric expansivity okay and what is this equal to it's a kappa t with a negative sign okay minus b dp by db at uh, constant temperature that is equal to 1 by kappa t so with these two definitions which i have written in the beginning the final expression for the cp minus cb this is equal to tv and then alpha p square upon kappa t so that is our final result here and if you just compare with the option which are given to us so we notice that uh, option c is the correct one here okay cp minus cb that is going to tv alpha square upon kappa t so therefore c is correct one here so let's continue with the next question the statement is an easy derivation of pv power gamma equal to constant for an ideal gas undergoing an adiabatic process consider p and v as the basic variables of an ideal gas okay so this is the hint uh, to solve this problem uh, and write the heat exchange dq in terms of dv and dp okay next using the definition of cp and cb in the expression for dq obtain a differential equation which correlate p and v for an adiabatic process and solve it to get the desired relationship okay and further it's mentioned that the derivation should not use the first law of thermodynamics as usually the relationship uh, between p and v for an adiabatic process which is pv power gamma that is equal to constant it involves the use of the first law of thermodynamics and quickly we can uh, solve that equation to obtain this result but it's mentioned directly that we we, uh, we don't have to make use of the first law of thermodynamics so that means we have to follow an alternative path so let's try to understand how we can uh, solve this problem so here because in the question it, the hint is give, already given to us we have to uh, start uh, uh, with uh, with the uh, mean uh, with the some sort of functional form of a certain th thermodynamic variable which is the function of b and p so here the thermodynamic variable is it's the entropy so we assume that let s it is a function of t and sorry b and p okay v and p okay now this implies that a small change in entropy that is equal to ds by db by keeping pressure constant db plus ds by dp dp by keeping v constant okay now if we multiply both sides by t so then we obtain tds that is equal to t ds by db db at constant pressure and then dv plus t ds by dp at constant volume and then multiply by dp okay now this is because tds that is equal to dq okay so i can write this equation as dq that is equal to tds by db t ds by db at constant pressure db plus t 
ds by dp at constant volume and then dp so here we have made use of the result tds that is equal to dq the second law of thermodynamics basically okay so let's call this as equation one okay now for an adiabatic process for an adiabatic process dq is equal to zero okay so if you substitute this in equation one we obtain tds uh, tds by dv so therefore equation one reduces to tds by dv at constant pressure multiply by dv plus t ds by dp at constant volume dp that is equal to zero okay now we can uh, rewrite this as t ds by dt at constant pressure and again dt by dv at constant pressure multiply by dv plus t ds by dt at constant volume and dt by dp at constant volume into dp that is equal to zero okay now here please pay attention to the point that i have used here i have introduced uh, dt in the denominator and as well as in the numerator also but the constant it's same okay so therefore there is no negative sign here so here we are not making use of the reciprocity theorem okay so therefore there is no negative sign here so now this equation can be further rewritten as so here we will further make use of the uh, the definition of the fact that tds so let me call this as equation 2 so we will make use of the definition that tds by dt at p that is equal to dq by dt at constant pressure and that is equal to cp okay similarly we are having the definition for cb tds by dt at constant volume that is equal to cv so 2 and 3 they implies or further we can uh, because it's an idle gas so before we uh, make use of the 2 and 3 let me uh, let me uh, mean solve the uh, the second differential which is for the idle gas pv equal to nrt so this implies that dv by dt okay because we need this differential in the equation e the equation uh, sorry we need this differential in equation 2 so that's why we are so we are obtaining the value of this differential okay so db by dt at constant pressure that is equal to nr upon p similarly dp by dt at constant volume that is equal to nr upon b so let me call this as equation 4 now 2 3 and 4 implies that so we have to basically substitute the value of these quantities uh, from uh, equation 3 and 4 in equation 2 okay so if you do if you do that then finally we are left with the result that cp and then multiply by p by n r so basically it's a uh, dt by dv at constant pressure so it is p by n r p by n r dv now the second term plus c v b upon n r and multiply by d p and that is equal to zero okay or this can be further rewritten as c p into p y n r d v that is equal to minus c v b upon n r d p okay or further rearranging the term cp by cb into dv by db that is equal to minus dp by p okay or integrating on both sides cp by cb by taking cp by cb equal to gamma so this equation will become cp by cb and then integral dv by dv that is equal to minus integral of 
dp by dp and this gives you so integral of dp by dp that is ln b so gamma ln b that is equal to ln b upon gamma that is equal to minus ln p plus constant of integration okay or uh, this can be for the rewritten as ln we bring p on on the left hand side so it become ln p plus ln b power gamma so that is equal to ln p b power gamma that is equal to constant okay so this implies p b power gamma that is equal to constant so hence this way we have obtained the desired relationship that connects p and b in a adiabatic process okay so this completes the solution so let's continue with the next question the statement is according to wien's theory of black body radiation the spectral energy density in a black body cavity at temperature t is given by this expression okay uh, where alpha and beta are constants and c is the speed of light further the intensity of radiation coming out of the cavity is so it, this is given uh, as u t c by 4 where u t that is equal to 0 to infinity u t lambda d lambda is the total energy density of the radiation okay so given the St uh, stefan boltzmann constant sigma and lambda m uh, lambda max into t its the, uh, the values they are given to us find the value of the constants alpha and beta okay and we are given as uh, the standard integral that we might require while solving this problem okay so from the expression for the uh, the spectral energy density we can calculate the total energy density uh, by making the following uh, equation so let me start from the result that is given to given to us the spectral density the spectral energy density in cavity at temperature t so this is given by the expression u t lambda d lambda that is equal to alpha upon c cube lambda 5 exponential minus beta upon lambda t d lambda so this is the expression given to us now with the help of this expression we can calculate the total energy density in the spectra okay the total energy density in spectra is let's call this as u lambda ut lambda that is equal to the integration from 0 to infinity which cover all the wavelength and then ut lambda d lambda and that is equal to now sub, uh, by making use of the equation 1 here so th that is the expression for ut ut lambda d lambda if we uh, substitute the value the constant term will come outside alpha upon c cube 0 to infinity and then inside we have 1 by lambda 5 exponential minus beta upon lambda t d lambda okay so let's call this as equation 2 okay so here we will make a substitution where beta upon lambda t that is equal to x okay or we can write beta upon t x is equal to lambda okay so that minus beta upon t x square d x that is equal to d lambda now when we are changing the variable then uh, accordingly we have to settle the limits of integration also okay so when lambda approaches 0 then x goes to so so that means from here if lambda approaches 0 so that means x will go uh, approach to infinity okay so x approach to infinity and when whereas when lambda approach goes to infinity this implies x goes to 0 so here the total energy density that is ut so that will be now the limit limit of, of integration they will change from infinity to 0 but also when we will substitute the value of the other parameters that is uh, the d lambda here so we will have a negative sign here so i'm um, i'm uh, doing all these two things in a single step uh, 
by inverting the limits of integration and then I will not make use of the negative sign here okay so th that is the negative sign is balanced by the change of the limit of integ integration so with this uh, uh, change of variable our final expression become ut is equal to alpha by cq then 0 to infinity otherwise it should be from infinity to 0 okay and then uh, inside the bracket we will have uh, 1 by lambda 5 so what is lambda lambda is equal to beta by tx so that, so that means t uh, x5 t5 upon beta 5 which is equal to 1 by lambda 5 and then exponential minus x and then d lambda which is equal to beta upon t x square dx so i am not making use of the negative sign here because i have already changed the limit of integration integration from infinity to g uh, infinity to 0 as 0 to infinity so another negative sign will come from here and that negative sign will cancel with the negative sign here or when while multiplied they will give a positive sign okay so now this can be quickly solved so this this is equal to alpha upon c cube t4 upon beta 4 and then 0 to infinity x cube exponential minus x dx now the value of this integral is given to us and its value is given as uh, 6 okay so therefore ut the total energy density is equal to therefore ut is equal to 6 alpha t4 upon c cube beta 4 so let's call this as our equation 3 now it's also given that the total intensity of radiation which is coming out of the cavity okay the total intensity of radiation coming out of cavity which is E and the expression is given to us as UT which is total energy density and C divided by 4 ok now this is equal to C by 4 multiply by UT and uh, what is the expression for UT it's equation 3 ok so 6 alpha T4 divided by C cube beta 4 ok and after uh, can, uh, cancelling the sum of the common terms here the energy E comes out to equal to 3 by 2 alpha t4 divided by c square beta 4 let this is equation 4 here okay now uh, according to Stephen Boltzmann law according to Stephen's law or Stephen Boltzmann law e is equal to sigma t4 ok so therefore 4 and 5 implies that sigma is equal to that is the coefficient of t power 4 th that is equal to 3 by 2 sigma uh, th sorry 3 by 2 alpha divided by c square beta 4 so from here we can determine alpha I think alpha turns out to be equal to 2 c square beta 4 upon 3 multiply by sigma so that is the value of alpha what uh, we will determine it at a later stage now uh, it's given that ut lambda ut lambda that is equal to alpha upon c cube lambda 5 exponential minus beta upon lambda t okay so from here this equation can be rewritten as ln ut lambda that is equal to ln alpha upon c cube okay minus 5 ln lambda plus ln exponential minus beta upon lambda t okay now if we differenti differentiate this equation with respect to lambda so that means differentiate with respect to lambda so then what we obtain is 1 upon 
यूटी लेमडा डी यूटी लेमडा अपॉन डी लेमडा दैट इज इक्वल टू माइनस फाइव आई लेमडा माइनस बीटा बाई टी इंटू माइनस वन बाई लेमडा स्केयर माइनस वन बाई लेमडा स्केयर नाउ फॉर द मैक्सिमम फॉर मैक्सिमम यूटी लेमडा फॉर maximum ut lambda which occurs at wavelength lambda is equal to lambda m okay so that means if this condition has to be satisfied so let me introduce a page here so that means if we uh, we have to satisfy this condition so then we should have d ut lambda by d lambda at lambda is equal to lambda m and this should vanish okay this implies that minus 5i lambda m plus beta upon t lambda m square that is equal to 0 okay and from here this equation can be further solved to obtain the result lambda m t that is equal to beta y 5 okay Or because we have we have to determine the value of alpha and beta, so from here beta can be written as beta is equal to five times lambda m and t. So product the this value of the uh, lambda m t this product is give already given to us. So we, which means beta is equal to five multiplied by lambda m into t, which is given to be two point nine multiplied by ten power minus three meter kelvin. Okay, and that is nothing but it is. Fourteen point five into ten power minus three meter Kelvin. So this is the value of beta. Okay. So now one one of the parameter has been determined. Now the alpha can uh, can be quickly determined by knowing the value of beta. So the the value of alpha that is given in equation six. Okay. So what is equation six? So this one. Okay. So alpha is equal to two c square beta four by three multiply by sigma. So if you substitute the values here. So that means alpha is equal to two c square beta power four divided by three multiplied by sigma Stefan's constant. If, and if you substitute the value of beta and sigma, okay, and it will come out to be equal to one fifty point three eight joule meter four. And then sec uh, second. Let me. I think uh, I'm not sure what the unit. So let me let me check the appropriate units, and then I, I will give you the appropriate unit here. It is second five. Okay. Yes. So that finished the question.